Well, first of all, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um, do you remember what your first introduction to music was? Yeah. Probably my grandfather. My grandfather, he had a jukebox. You know a jukebox? Mm -hmm. What that is, yeah? Yeah. Um, like a wheel, it's a jukebox. He used to have it in the corner. He used to put all the old songs on and things like that, you know what I mean? But a weird thing, I've got a weird story about that. I remember being a kid, and I was in the house with my mum, and my mum had a CD. And it's called Ministry of Sound, and I thought, I said to her, what's that CD? It's the first CD I ever remember, you know what I mean? And it was Ministry of Sound. A few years later, that's who Sammy record deal with, Ministry of Sound. Really? So I think that's strange that I should. Well, what, what CD, CD was it? It's just a Ministry of Sound compilation oh, CD. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I remember asking what it was, I didn't know what it was, and then, you know, that was the first label of Sound too, so yeah. And um, I remember you also got a banjo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me something more about that? That was, that was my grandfather, to be honest with you, you know. Um, I said, I want a guitar, I want to play the guitar. So he said, because um, at the time I had no money, I was only young, you know what I mean? I was, you know, we couldn't afford musical instruments and things like that, you know. But my granddad, you know, he saved a little bit of money. He said, okay, I'll give you a, a banjo instead. I said, what, what am I going to do with a banjo, you know what I mean? He said, everyone plays the guitar. If you play the banjo, you'll get on. <laughs> I didn't sing at the time, you know what I mean? I didn't sing. So yeah, that's how I ended up with a banjo. Uh, so you did end up playing the banjo? That's yeah, cool. I can play the banjo, yeah. yeah. Still do? <laughs> What's that? Do you still do it? Um, no, I don't, I don't play it so much now. I mean, sometimes if there's a banjo in the studio, a lot of studios use banjos, you know what I mean? And, um, even like weird stuff like hip hop. I know hip hop artists, and they get a banjo and they mic it up, they put the microphone on it, but they use different sounds in the computer. And they, because it's such a strong sound, they change the sound and it sounds amazing, yeah. So a lot of studios have banjos, I'll pick it up and have a little go for a minute. And uh, you uh, said that you didn't sing back then. Do uh, I watch, sorry? You didn't sing um, no. yet. Yeah. Uh, when did you start uh, singing? Yeah. I was about 21. 21, yeah. I started singing. I, um, a friend of mine at the time introduced me to someone who wrote his own songs. But I, didn't, I, I could only play a few chords on the guitar. Mainly, uh, you know, play banjo and things like that. And um, I liked it. I liked what he'd done. But I'm competitive, I think if he can do it, I can do it. Do you know what I mean? So I thought, I want to I wanna write some songs. So I went away and wrote a few songs, tried to sing them. Yeah, I showed a couple of my mates it, and I went from there. Yeah. What, what was the first song you wrote? Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. It wasn't, it wasn't as good as the ones I'm writing now. <laughs> what was it about? Um, I think it was just about just life at the time. Life at the time, yeah. I can't quite remember, it's so long ago, I haven't played it for a long time yet. So you were 21 then? Yeah. And uh, at what age did you get signed? Yeah, it was... Do you know what, I don't even know, it was like 22, I want to 20, yeah, 22 I think. So that really was the turning point of your career? Yeah, because I done me, I only done one gig, and I got signed at my first gig. So I was writing songs, and someone introduced me to a producer. Um, and the producer lives in Liverpool, but he produced some tracks for like, um, well, he worked as an engineer on some tracks with other producers like uh, Coldplay and Paolo Nutini, Rihanna, people like that. Um, so I went in, made a few demos with him. Um, then he gave a demo to the local radio station. They asked me to do a gig. I'd never done a gig. It was your I first I, gig Yeah, ever. I, didn't, I didn't have a band, you know what I mean? Um, so a few people agreed to play with me, but they're not, they wasn't band members, you know. Yeah, done the gig, got signed. Didn't do another gig for a year. Because I had to, I had to grow my hair. I had a skinhead and that, you know what I mean? Short hair and I didn't dress properly for music. <laughs> you got to dress right these days, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I went from there and signed, signed my record here on my second gig. So, yeah. I, I want to go back a little bit. Your first gig, do you remember uh, that gig? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah? Yeah. How did it go down? <laughs> It was, it was really good. Um, it was a lot of people that I knew, you know, come to work. They couldn't believe that I was doing music because my lifestyle before music was completely different. You know, I didn't didn't go to like college or university and things like that. You know, I was involved in, you know, crime and things like that. Just trying to survive really, and get some money, you know, to eat. Um, as I said, my publisher was in the room at the time, and that's that's the deal I signed the publishing deal at that gig. And he's seen everyone going mad. You know, so the, the energy in the room is great and, you know, 
fortunately enough for them people doing that, you know, that, that changed my life. Yeah, yeah be, uh, before that you actually had a really tough life. Mm. Uh, it's okay if you don't want to... That's okay, it's okay. ...go into that, yeah. but... Um, it's normal to me though. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's normal. Yeah, because your dad was addicted yeah. to heroin? He still is. Still is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what was that like? It was normal. It was, it was wrong, you know what I mean? It, it was um, it was tough, you know, it, it was difficult. Uh, but it was it was a really good learning curve and it set my mind in a different place than most people's minds, you know. Most people uh, you know, they live a life a comfortable life without knowing they live a comfortable life. They complain about small matters, you know, um, and I'd see people like, you know, with new clothes, a bike, you know, to ride, or a new football, or new football boots. You know, I, I had holes in my shoes trying to play football. Really? And they used to say, you can't play football because you, your shoes aren't good enough, you're going to slide on the floor. Who said that? Like, football managers at the ah. time. And I was a good little football player, do you know what I mean? So it used to, it used to hit me in the eye, but it led me to, um, to take things like that in my stride and become stronger and, and um, approach life a lot differently. Yeah. In what way has that helped your music? I don't, I don't follow no trends. I don't want to sound like anyone else, you know. I think that comes from not being able to have what everyone else had. So I said, well, when I was younger, I couldn't have what they had. So I said, okay, because I can't have what they have, I don't want to have what they've got. And I'll be happier. Do you know what I mean? Is that still how you feel? But yeah, so with music now, I see, you know, other, other bands, they're using computers to get the sounds and, you know, there's someone else is writing the songs, going, here's a song for you. Go and, go and sing that. It's all fake. It's all fake. So for me, it's about being truthful. Uh, yeah, moreover that, um, most of your songs are uh, about real stuff, mm -hmm. about um, things like visiting people in prison, yeah, driving yeah. on the street. Yeah. Uh, why is it so important for you to write about those real matters? Because, you know, we, when I go away from this stage, I get off this stage and everyone's like, oh, Louis, 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 all really good. Get in the van, get drove around, nice food, all stuff like that. When I get home, different lifestyle changes completely. I go home, I see my, my friends, you know, some of them are dead, some of them in jail. Um, as I said, you know, my father is still addicted to drugs. I can have all the money in the world and, and try and help him, but, you know, if you... Won't fix the problems. It won't fix the problems. Not all the time. Um, and I feel like uh, your type of songs are also um, linked with your opinion about chart music mm. because you have uh, vocalized a strong opinion yeah, about yeah, that yeah. in a lot of interviews. Yeah, what I can think, you tell me about that? Yeah, well, here's the good thing. Here's the, here's the positive side because not everything's bad, you know what I mean? Right. The, the good thing is, you know, I'm writing rock and roll music. Mm -hmm. Not all of my songs, but a lot of my songs are rock and roll music. What I put out up to now on the video has been rock and roll. If I would have said to you two years ago, I was going to write rock and roll music and be played in England, for example, on the biggest radio station, Radio One, and you know, 3FM, and all these places, you'd have laughed at me. Do you know what I mean? Rock and roll, what are you talking about? Do you know what I mean? That's why I say I'm rock and roll's finest. I say that, so people say, how can you say rock and roll's finest? It's easy. I'm the only one doing it. Do you know what I mean? There is no competition. And I think it's important to be truthful and make music that's honest. And you know, I'm seeing the I'm seeing the, the fruits of that lately, you know, I'm seeing people come to my gigs and I'm selling every gig out, you know, so I can't complain, it's good. Um, and you were actually compared to Bob Dylan and um, Johnny Cash. How do you feel about those com comparisons? It's a, it's, a, it's a great compliment, it's a great compliment to be compared to people like that, you know, I'm just doing my own thing now, you know, I... Uh, I don't think you should aspire to be like another artist. You should only aspire to be yourself. You know, stay confident in what you do. In what way do you um, accomplish that? You just you just stay true to yourself. You know you don't you don't listen to too much music. I don't listen to too much music. Mm -hmm. You know I write my music first, then I do the listening instead of the other way around. A lot of people listen to songs and say, "How can I recreate that? And make it my own?" That's that's not art. Um, do you have influences? Or, yeah, you say you don't listen to a lot of music. I, I, don't, I don't have influences, but I have inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely get inspiration. Um, uh -huh. I've got, you know, I've got my own inspiration first and foremost. 
but I do admire other artists who have come through difficult you know, paths. And if they haven't come through a difficult path, at least they recognise it and speak about it. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I do get inspired, like Tupac Secure, for example. Yeah. You know, he was a big influence for me growing up. You know, I was young, I was angry. Um, and, you know, that kind of music fitted me perfect at the time. Yeah, and then I got introduced later on when after I started playing guitar music to like Johnny Cash and Bob Dylan, people like that. You know, protest singers again, singing about real things. You know, um, in the charts, as, as to, your, to your answer, how many people are singing about real things these days? Can you name anyone in the chart now who's speaking real music? Mm, who's not, talking not about either. poor people or drug addictions or anything like that? No? Exactly. Not many, so why do you buy it? Do you know what I mean? Why do people buy it? You know, it's a, they're just being force fed it. I don't like that, I'm here to change that. And um, what is it like when you get an idea? Is it different every time or uh, is it uh, every time the same thing? Uh, when I write? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's different things all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. As you hear in the, in the music, you know, there's a lot of positive things as well. You know, I do talk about that kind of stuff, but at the same time, I talk about having fun, things like that. I think that's really important as well. Keep the, keep the spirit tight. Yeah, yeah, but also, well, we already talked about real things a little bit, but um, politics, how do they, uh, they translate back into your music? Look, you know, they affect, they affect everyone, don't they? They affect everyone. How much we can do about it, I don't know. You know, how much, how much we can change as people, I don't know. And the thing is, you know, you might want to change something to what I want to change, and you might want to change something to what you want to change, so... You know, I think I think we need to leave that to, you know to where it is. We can talk about it, but I don't think artists should be standing on stage telling people what to think. I think that's wrong. You know what I mean? Let people make their own decisions. Yeah. Um, do you maybe remember a special moment with a fan that has struck you the most? Yeah, people are traveling to gigs. I was in um, I was in Stoke in England, which is you know it's not. It's a good place, but it's not like, you know, it's not a central place. It's not like London or Liverpool or Manchester, you know, it's sort of in between. And um, a fan had flew all the way from Poland to Stoke. Of all places, she could have flew to Manchester, would have been easier. She flew from Poland to Stoke to see me. Just watched the gig back on a flight again. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Touches me stuff like that, you know. And maybe short stories? Or do you uh, hear a lot of stories that fans share? Of course, you know, people come up to me and say it's after gigs a lot of the time, um, especially on me headline tours, you know, people are coming up and saying, we, we come and watch you because of the things you're talking about in the music. Um, you know, we can relate to you, things like that. So people are definitely crying out for more honesty in, 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 in the art form these days. So yeah, I, I do get emotionally touched by people like that. And you're from Liverpool, um, as can well you as the Beatles. The accent? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> it's, it was difficult at first, but now I can. Yeah. Uh, I think I can understand. It quite I'm getting well. used to speaking a lot slower for people, so. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Nice. Uh, but you're from Liverpool yeah. as well as the Beatles. Um, yeah. Do you like their music? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Brilliant music. What is your favorite Beatles song? Um, I haven't got one. I haven't got one. I'm not a. You know, I'm not. I've never. Not a big fan. No, I'm not. I'm not not a fan. Mm -hmm. I like the Beatles. I am a fan of the Beatles. You know, I don't sit there and listen to Beatles albums, but I am a fan of the Beatles. If a song comes on, I say it's a great song. You know, still, still by far the best band. Uh, is that uh, overall your attitude with music that you don't like songs particularly, but more the albums? Uh, no, it's more about the artist. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I don't even like the music that much, <laughs> but if the artist is, if the artist intrigues me, then I say okay, I'll give it a listen. And I try and make I try and make myself get, get into that zone that they're in and, and, and appreciate the music. Um, and I want to talk about your uh, one to watch prize because you won that um, as well as uh, other prizes. I'm uh, for some more this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is that like? Yeah. That for me is um, that's like the halfway point to winning the, the big awards. Do you know what I mean? That's sure, where I'm aiming. Yeah. I'm, I'm aiming for them big awards. Yeah. But it's good, it's good to be recognized, don't get me wrong, you know, it's good to be recognized. And, you know, in Liverpool now, people say, oh yeah, the Beatles, well, how long ago was the Beatles? You know, who's there now doing it? No one. No one from Liverpool. There's a lot of people in Liverpool, but, you know, as born and bred Liverpool artists as the Beatles was. Yeah. There's no one doing it. Do you know what not, I mean? Not many, no. No. <laughs> 
No one doing it successfully. So, <laughs> so uh, the I'm taking that the path is paved for path. you. To do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any more future ambitions in the, music? Yeah, you know, for, for me, music for me, it feels like you know, it's it, it's everything for me. But at the same time, you know, there is another another important. You know, there is other important aspects of life which I want to, you know, embrace and, and get involved in. Not just music. Music I'm going to use as you know, a stepping stone as much as I can to go on to bigger and better things. Hopefully, you know, not better things, but you know. What are those things? If I might ask. Well, you know, I want to help people first and foremost. You know, I want to I want to use um, whatever um, you know power to give people opportunities. You know, I've got. To help people, you know what I mean. I want to, I want to, I want to help people who have got no opportunities. I want to help people who, are, you know, can't afford to eat things like that. You know, that kind of thing. So. And do you have ideas how you want to go about that? There's, there's many. I'm, to, I'm talking to a lot of, you know, a lot of people at the moment through my record label. I'm speaking to some charities and things like that. So that'd be good to get involved in. But I like to hands-on personally go out and do things like that as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.